My question is related to the book Think and Grow Rich. By, I know that Napoleon Hill talks about in order to be successful, a burning desire backed by faith and persistence. And I was curious, how does that tie into the alignment that you were talking about in the upstream, or does it tie in? Well, it does. <clears throat> Expectation may be the most powerful collective word because in expectation, all of the elements that help you to establish a point of attraction that is necessary are happening because in expectation, there is desire or focus. There is also belief. So in expectation, there is an absence of resistance. And that's all that is required is a focus upon what is desired and an absence of resistance. So the reason we are certain that he spoke of persistence is because it takes some time to practice yourself in to that vibration of expectation. It's misunderstood by most humans because they really believe that the persistence that they are to apply is just keep doing it, keep giving it effort, do what it takes. But that's not the persistence that we would be encouraging. We would be encouraging the persistence of caring about how you feel mm -hmm. and focusing yourself into that place where you can allow what you're wanting. We've been talking a lot about this vortex, this vibrational reality that you can't see or hear or smell or taste or touch. But there is a way of knowing it's there, and it's by feeling it. So you have to get in touch with your emotions, and you have to get in touch with what energy feels like in order to know it. And you can't do what almost everybody does about everything else that they're trying to prove or confirm. Mm -hmm. You can't ask for a group consensus. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens with so many. They want a group consensus before they will believe. Mm -hmm. But what is faith? What is faith anyway? Faith is belief in what is unseen. It's faith in what you're not yet seeing or hearing or smelling. Faith is tuning in to the earlier stage of the translation. Faith is recognizing the vibration before it is fully manifested. Oh, it is so wonderful after the fact, once you've allowed yourself to be there and then allowed the full manifestation of something to happen. It's so nice to recognize the full manifestation as a confirmation, as an affirmation of your vibrational practice. But we want you to be happy in the vibrational practice. That's what faith is, and that's what you have to know about source. Mm -hmm. Source is represented in everything that you see. But the thing is, you were born as magnificent vibrational translators. You were born as translators in such a sophisticated way that you don't even know you're doing it. So then you want to look with this sophisticated translation of sight and sound and taste and touch and smell. You want to smell source. You want to touch source. You want it to be tangible like that. Well, it is tangible in all of the magnificent things you see, but you want to label it differently, you see. So in time, you come to know that source is a consciousness that you receive. Source is in your idea. Source is in your emotion of love and appreciation. That's how you know you are in touch with that. And in time, you will come to recognize that source is not giving itself when you're good and withholding itself when you're bad. Where'd you get that stuff? Source is ever present and you let it in or you don't. In other words, you are the depriver of it. And so you are the one who must prove it to you. You are the one who must find the vibrational frequency of it and do it often enough. And you know, how do you know the presence of something unless you deprive yourself of it and know the absence of it? But we think it is so helpful to understand that it is always present. They are ready for you to meet it in vibrational terms. And once you do, and then you begin to do it on purpose. Mm -hmm. 
what happens to you is you begin to experience this ever-present abiding sense of well-being. And while things show up that you trip over, they never really take you far from your balance because you do have this understanding that you are loved and supported in all things at all times. But there's something else that we really want to give you because we can feel how steeped you are in the Think and Grow Rich material. In other words, we can feel that you've been studying it and feeling the power and the value of it, and there is great power and value. But we have a story that we want to tell you that's going to put all of this into context for you. Mm -hmm. Because Jerry, you are aware of Jerry. Mm -hmm. Jerry was studying that for many years before he met us and teaching from it. He held seminars, and that book was the textbook that everyone was reading. And it was from that textbook that he was gathering the principles and the stories from his own life that he was explaining. And so one day, not long after Esther had begun receiving us, very early stages in 1985 or early 86, Jerry was giving a presentation from that book. And he was telling a story, one of his favorite stories from the book, about the sharecropper's daughter who was demanding from this very wealthy man, my mammy's got to have 50 cents. And her determination was so strong that this very wealthy man who had picked up a barrel stave and was going to strike her because he was so annoyed by her was overpowered by her determination. And so as Jerry was telling this story from this book, Esther was in the audience and she felt herself all filled up with Napoleon Hill all filled up with him, the clear essence of him. He had been enjoying Jerry's presentation, and Esther is sitting there as this open vessel in complete sync with the vibration of that book, and there he is. Esther is full of him. She could hardly sit in her seat. She wanted to go and drag Jerry off the stage and into the parking lot <laughs> so that he could have a conversation with this author of this important-to-him book. And so... When the seminar was over, Esther went to Jerry and said, we've got to go. And he said, wait a minute. She said, we've got to go. We've got to go. They went to the parking lot. And Jerry visited with him. Take it easy. <laughs> Through Esther. And Jerry said, this book has been amazing. It has helped me so much in all that I am doing. What would you do differently now? He said... First, I would have told where it came from, who was receiving it, or in contact with someone else who was. And he said, I would have explained the source energy part of it. And Jerry said, why did you not? And he said, they would not publish it. It would not have been published because the consensus of the people in those days, they were wary about weird things like this brave ones that you are. <laughs> so Jerry was satisfied. He was so thrilled and realizing that Abraham is filling in those missing pieces, those important missing pieces. And we're going to fill some of those in for you right here and now. But there's another piece to this story. So years later, years, years later, Jerry and Esther are um, apart for some rare and odd reason. And Jerry is in a bookstore by himself, and he sees a Think and Grow Rich book, but it doesn't look like the ones he's been buying. Very odd, old-fashioned cover. So he bought it. He was so excited. And then he bought the version of it that he had last read many years before. And he took them to his hotel room. And that afternoon, while Esther was off doing something else, he went through that book line by line and highlighted the pieces that were in the original manuscript that had been edited out. Mm. Things about source, things about the ethers, things about consciousness, all those things that you've got to know before any of this makes any sense to you. All of these things that you've got to understand before your guidance system even comes into play. In other words, if you don't have a relationship between something and something, you have nowhere to know where you stand. You see what we're getting at? Mm -hmm. And so 
these are the pieces that we're wanting you to find a way of integrating because how do you know? How do you know? Do you read a book of somebody else that knew? And you read it often enough that then you know it too? That's not how it works, is it? Because words don't teach. It's only life experience that teaches. And so you've got to find some way of finding some relationship with the source within you. Those are the questions that you're asking. How do I know about source? You have to feel that. You have to feel when you're in sync with it and when you're not. And you have to do it often enough consciously, not by default, not by just bumbling around and thinking thoughts and focusing on that and focusing on that and feeling good sometimes and not feeling good sometimes. You've got to show yourself what feels good and you've got to know why that feels good and what doesn't feel good and you've got to know why that doesn't feel good you have to introduce yourself to your own guidance system that's why we teach meditation because when you meditate you quiet your mind when you quiet your mind as in, in the stopping of thought and there was focusing on a very small thought like the flickering of a flame or the dripping of a faucet or your own heartbeat or Esther likes to listen to the sound of the air conditioner, something that's steady but really easy for her to focus upon and find the rhythm of. Find something that doesn't take your mind into tangents and focus there. And in doing so, you quiet your own mind. And when you quiet your own mind, your vibration automatically raises because where you naturally are is up in this high vibration. It's only negative thoughts that pull you down into a lower vibration and separate you, that's too strong of a word, but add resistance, keep you from the receptive mode that we've been talking about all day. So once you quiet your mind and your vibration raises, now you're in the receptive mode. And now you can hear what source knows. Now you can rendezvous with what source is. Now you can recognize the physical manifestations of all that you naturally are. You come into sync with your total self, you see. We would replace the idea of reasoning with the idea of sensing or feeling the vibe of or following the path of least resistance. Because when we say to you that your vibrational reality is filled with all of the things that you have been asking for, which means all of the things that you have already become, and that your source stands there as the knower, holder, beer, broadcaster of all of that, and that law of attraction is responding to that. So there is this powerful current or path that is calling you. So do you really want to reason it out, or do you want hmm. to intuitively feel it? Can you see how your work is singular? It's to get in the receptive mode and then follow the impulse. So your work is nothing more than to get into the receptive mode, get into the receptive mode, get into the receptive mode. Esther knows that her work in preparation for this gathering, aside from making sure that everyone has shown up with all the equipment and stuff and chairs and things that you need, her work is very simple. Just be in a place where you can align because the receptive mode is all she has to accomplish. Everything else follows from that, you see. And it's true for all of you. Everything follows. Everything that you want follows from your practiced, what were Napoleon Hill's words? Persistence. He talked about definiteness of purpose. purpose. Definiteness of purpose, meaning clear-minded. When you say, I want it, but, or I want it, but look over there, or wouldn't this be nice, but that's what's going on, that's not definiteness of purpose. That's watering it down. That's sloppy vibration. That's putting as much resistance in it as there is desire. That's moving not forward. That's not being in the receptive mode. There's no possible way. And so many people are standing right in that place in that place of reasoning, which they translate out to mean weigh the pros and the cons, the pluses and the minuses, the splitting of the energy. Split my energy, split my energy, and then be reasonable. And we say, get into the receptive mode.